The journey we have been on has been tough. Is there two? Got to turn and run quickly. But if you take it one step at a time, in the right direction, with our support and a common purpose, never giving up, you'll make our country proud. This is magic. Absolutely outstanding. All we can say is... Good luck with your World Cup later this year. I uh, know you guys will be awesome. We've also walked down this journey before and... We hope that you guys are going to make it even more better. I know you guys are going to smash it and go all out. I'm sure you will do the entire country proud and hope to see you lifting the trophy at the end. You guys have got this. Just remember that we're all behind you and we've got your back. All the best. Make us proud. We will unite. It's all taking place in the Mother City, in the city of Cape Town in South Africa. The 2023 Netball World Cup enters uh, day seven of the competition. We've seen so much excitement throughout the week. And uh, of course, uh, lots to look uh, forward to in terms of the scenic beauty and views that the Mother City has to offer. Spectators from all over the world have made their way to the Cape Town International Convention Center, which has been home to this year's Netball World Cup. What a fantastic facility it has been for all family members, young, old, that have really been entertained and thrilled with all the action that we've seen here at the Netball World Cup 2023. And today's gonna to be no different as we look ahead to two more fixtures to wrap up the second stage of the netball world cup well let's take a quick look then at uh, what is coming up just to whet your appetite watch me go again get up and go again watch me go again and when life knocks me down just watch me go again this is the rap race this ain't a goose chase this is everything you'll ever need in one place standing here i can see it all got me feeling like a hundred feet tall so won't let anybody tell me what i can't do because i got more of everything with true value i'm for real not just following an old trend so when life knocks you down get up and go again watch me go again get up and go again watch me go again and when life knocks me down just watch me go again Watch me go again. Get up and go again. Watch me go again. And when life knocks me down, just watch me go again. It is a face off between two African countries that have got uh, such a long history of intense competition. Spot approaches high from their draw against New Zealand in a yesterday's encounter, which resulted in a 48 all result, while Uganda is high in confidence following their result against the Welsh side. We saw the shoot cranes from Uganda making their way to the venue. And uh, definitely looking to this battle that will be coming up shortly. Joining me in country, former Spot Proteus captain, the champion, Amanda Mainhard. Wonderful to have you alongside as we are treated once more by the Spot Proteus. Great to see the South African side again after yesterday's encounter against New Zealand. You can see the smiles, the excitement from the girls as they head into the arena. So looking then at the loss as uh, the two teams uh, wrap up at the Pool G stages. Uh, South Africa on the third position with Uganda on fourth. And uh, it's going to be a big one because uh, there's been talk about spa protests and keeping their semi-final hopes alive. They would have to defeat the she cranes by 60 plus goals and uh, whether that's possible or not is going to be up to the next 60 minutes of action but for now let's take a look at how coach fred mugero of uganda has lined himself up yeah as always cholok there at the back for uganda shooting 150 goals 
out of the 168 that Uganda has had so far in this competition, she's standing 201 centimeters tall. So the second tallest player in this competition and the go-to girl for Uganda at the back. Well, uh, let's hear then from the go-to girl of uh, Uganda, Mary Sholako. We did catch up with her earlier on. Mary, a huge uh, rivalry today in terms of uh, Nepal standing in Africa. What's your mindset going into this one? Uh, it's going to be a tough one and it's going to be a big game. I think everybody's just waiting for this one. But we're mentally prepared as well. We know it's going to be a big tough and a big fight, but we've got to keep fighting throughout the whole four quarters to see what happens. And what's the game plan? The game plan is just like to just slow it down and just play a, a slow paced game, not giving away cheap balls and just a little bit of more structure. And what will a win mean for you guys? It will mean that we, we have achieved our target, and, but there's a lot to come again. We still have two more games. It's just like our main aim here was just like to continue to build that every game that we play. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Quite interesting there from uh, Shalok talking, Amanda, about uh, playing a structured game, slowing it down. And um, we wouldn't expect that because we know the type of netball that the shoe cranes play and the pace that they normally approach these games. Uganda at times just showing good patience throughout this competition, just controlling the ball, playing it short. We've seen Coach Fred a lot of the times just telling the girls, just play what's in front of you, don't get caught on the speed of the opponent. But there we see the South African lineup today. So not changes from last night. The only change we're seeing is Van der Merwe there on that wing defense position, getting her start. And we did see the dominance of Talyat last night on the attack. So it'll be interesting to see what she will provide for the Proteas going into today. Well, talking about prevention, one player that uh, certainly stood out in that encounter against uh, the Silver Ferns was Pumza Maweni. Let's find out her thoughts ahead of this match. Pumza, an historic intercept yesterday. I mean, you saved the country, you co created history. How are you feeling uh, coming off of that draw? Oh, I felt like it was not enough because I was, I was hungry for a win. Um, but anyway, yeah, it happened. Um, I think uh, we're all pumped and ready for this match, for today's match. I think everyone is, um, we, we are aware of what's happening now where we are. And I think we, we're ready to just go in court and, and do the best. Well, you know, the objective of getting into the semis means you guys got to hit the ground running. How are you guys approaching the game? Uh, everyone has a job to do. Um, I think we play a more defensive uh, game. And we, it's always hard to play against the Uganda over today. Very good to... Um, to keep the ball uh, so i think um, we need to, uh, each and everyone to uh, just go um, hard and make sure we we stop the short one for the long one so that we win the balls um, i think we all are away we we really have a, a good shooters that we can um, just uh, score the board and make sure we take each and every center pass i think we're ready for it you're coming up against mary she's quite tall how do you manage that Oh man, I think in this time, I mean, I've been play, playing against Tollies. Uh, there's nothing scary. Mary, I respect her. She's quite strong and um, very uh, tall, obviously, it, it, her advantage. But for me, it um, doesn't scare me uh, anymore like, because I've been playing uh, against China Fowler. So I know what I to do. I, I think I need to just uh, be, to be clinical around her and make sure um, of the body and contest what I can. All the base for today. Thank you so much. Well, you've got to love that uh, from Pumza Maweni saying that she's used to playing against uh, Tollies, a very, well, a slang name, common name for tall players. So uh, Sherlock is uh, just going to be another day in the office for Maweni. So as uh, both teams then have taken to court, ready for what promises to be a big face-off between two countries in the African continent. Our umpires today, Joshua Barring, Kate Rant, and Tracy Ann Griffith is the reserve umpire. So we're all ready and set for the opening game in this afternoon session. Spot Proteus up against Uganda. Gritzel gets us straight into it, setting the tone for what we can anticipate to see this afternoon. And uh, joining us in commentary as well, sitting uh, courtside in the 
Mick of Binks is uh, Zanadem Dote. And, um, Zan, great to have you alongside. We're going to keep you there to take us uh, through what you're seeing from the best seat in the house, if I may say so. Yeah, well, Simi and the Mans, this one promises to be a humdinger. It is an African derby between the two strongest African teams in netball. The last time these two sides met, the she cranes edged the spa proteas, but it's a different day. They are in South Africa. They're playing at home, the spa proteas. We know what this crowd has been able to do, how they've been able to propel them forward and help them cross that finish line. We saw that yesterday against the Silver Ferns when they played to a draw. So everything to play for for both these teams. So I think uh, Malawi will have a thing or two to say about that labeling uh, the Spa Proteas and Uganda as the two top teams in the country. But uh, you're 100% right in terms of what we've seen so far. They are right up there. But uh, looking at what we can anticipate, Amanda, from the Sheep Cranes, what are you looking forward to? What do you think we're going to see the fireworks in this encounter? Well, definitely expecting that lady on screen, Irene Ayari, to give a lot of full to Tolok. She's been the main goal assist for South Africa. Uganda going into this competition and they will have that player under a lot of pressure on the defence but a good circle edge drive there by Thistle finding Fenter straight under the post and just from my side just looking at Pumza Maweni she's going to need to really be clinical and clean up here today she does tend to have a high penalty count as a goalkeeper we already saw the umpire indicating that she was you know pushing so she's going to need to really play the most clinical game today. She is up against that powerhouse of Sherlock, the go-to girl in the shooting circle for Uganda. Then while talking about, uh, you know, the physicality from Maweni, it's always the case when two African teams get Don't together. We anticipate the intensity, the physicality side. of the encounter as well. And I'm sure that's going to continue to be a theme in this encounter. South Africa. Bunny's break, we'll attack. Oh, this is good use of the middle channel to that shooting circle as Grissel plants herself right on the edge of the circle. Patience from Uganda. Taking it back, waiting for Cholok to give them the drive. Great deflection there by Victorious. South Africa. Uganda just getting away with that pass. Obstruction, we attack. South Africa just having to go back a bit. Again, the pressure coming from Uganda defensively. Good for the spa approaches to be able to play that ball with patience because you can doing well to close the first phase on the center pass and forcing that ball to go to the back players. And there we can see the hands coming from the South African players, to making sure they're in front of the feeders, trying to slow down the ball, going to Choluk. There she is on the drive again. Yeah, well, she had to collect the ball and assist the attackers Bunny's because she can see that uh, they're spending too much time in that uh, mid third. And look at that exceptional steal. How superb was that from Paula Pretorius? The outside hand and the quick transition down court from the Spa Proteus. And Ina Marie Fenter makes it count. The crowd erupts. And it was a brilliant passage of play. Again, Bertie are just really using the middle well. For me, that's been one standout, having Crystal in the middle. It's just the option she gives them at the top. And the height she brings to that attacking end. But Fenter securing another shot. We know she didn't have the best of nights last night. She struggled to find the post, but sitting comfortably at 100%. Six out of six from her. Again, the pressure from the Proteas, just running with players. 
and Mulwini trying to shut down the option coming from Cholak. Yeah, this is a good unit defensive from the Spark Proteus, putting the Sheik Cranes under a tremendous amount of pressure. One step forward, goalkeeper, beside the keeper. What I love about that defensive beside pressure is that it's starting keeper. quite high and forcing the forcing you get it to play quite a few balls, putting a lot of ball, stress on the South ball. South Africa. South Africa really turned up the defensive Bunny pressure in this attack. quarter. 7-5 so is where things stand. Bunny Just uh, seen seven, six Bunny minutes, minutes of action and look at the triangle. Just works so beautifully for the spark protest. That's been the prime position where they are you know, releasing that last feed into that circle. And it seems to be working for the South African side. There we go. First turn for Maweni. Tolok just getting caught for the contact on that contest. Yeah, it's a great job oh, from Maweni. She's been so impressive throughout oh, this on. World Cup. And uh, confidently said in the pre-match interviews that she's used to playing against the tall players. So she's not faced by Mary Sholok, who measures a 2.01 meters in height. Again, at the moment, just playing it a lot, cross-court ball. Proti are setting themselves up ball side. But the patience again, the discipline coming from Uganda. Finding contact centre, finding obstruction centre. And then the nice split goal defense to offload from Irene. The goal defense. On to Cholak. Yeah, what's interesting is that uh, Irene has South then taken a shot. She did have an attempt earlier on, which wasn't successful. But uh, they're already signaling that uh, Sherlock is here and she's going to be the only shooter. Whereas uh, Irene Iyaru on goal attack is the collector, the playmaker. So uh, that's something that Maweni needs to be aware of. Expecting all the shots of the majority of those to be taken by Sherlock. And the South Africans fans seem to enjoy this. Barney's contact, win attack. Defensively, they're just not allowing Barney's Uganda contact, to hit that circle attack. edge. But how good is Uganda, Amanda, from a patience perspective? Because contact, treasuring that ball with their dear lives. Don't yeah, defense, look, they're playing contact, a lot of passes are, to get that ball into the circle. And one has to wonder, can they South do that Africa. for four quarters? Because at the end of the day, there's a big difference whether you play 100 passes or whether you play sufficiently, you play less passes. So we'll have to see how they go. It is though they trademark Uganda, that ball position. Cholok spoke to it during the pre-match interview that they cannot be giving free ball, easy ball to the spot approaches. So they'll play as many balls as possible as long as they keep that ball position and those balls land up in the shooters just like in the rear fenter keeps the scoreboard ticking for the Spa Proteus. Seeing uh, some of the dignitaries that are here. Uh, President of Nepal, South Africa, Bunny Cecilia Mulugwane as well as the Deputy Minister of Sports, Arts and Recreation, Mamu Notawe Mafu. So it's lovely to see them supporting Contact. the ladies day in, day out. I'm really impressed with the pressure from the staff, the spa process because what it's forcing, it's forcing Sherlock to pull out of the circle and become South a ball Africa. carrier. But Mawen is very much wide awake and alert and contesting every time Sherlock pulls out of the circle. Oh, Hannah Merve and Pretorius just having the patience, holding the ball. Waiting for the option to open up in front. And Amanda, they, Pretorius and Falmeva are doing such a stellar job on the attack as defensive players. They're carrying that ball right down to the transverse line. 
I love their contribution there on the attack for the Spa Proteas. Oh, there's the shoot cranes. Still stuck in that mid third. Contact centre. Goal third. And the cross over pass from uh, Sherlock. Goalkeeper contact. And Irene Ihoru just giving them the option in front. South pulling Africa. Pretorius away from Cholok. She's yet to make her mark in that circle today. She hasn't taken a shot for Uganda. Twelve nine is where things stand. Three up for the spot protest. Just less than four minutes to the end of the first quarter. Yeah, and I think the South Africans will start to take note of the fact that Irene Ayora hasn't shot any goals yet. So the main shooter in that circle is just Cholak at the moment, and so they need to set it up in that defensive circle. Just be aware of that. But again, the challenge from Pretorius, coming from the back. Brilliant defence from the Spa Proteas. It's just the consistency for me. They pressing Uganda in this midcourt, and that quick offload to Taliyan from Fenter. Oh, and the crowd showing appreciation of that passage of play. It was swift. It was smooth. It was flawless. By the spot Proteus. Oh, Taliyar, lucky to get away with that one. She presents herself to that ball. And also, just making the work easy for Fenter at the moment, just pulling the defence, making sure they've got the one-on-one -on -one option with Fenter. She's so strong. Just can put up a really good hold for the Proteus. Contact centre arm. Oh, good option from uh, Lillian Contact Achola. Who finds yeah, Sholo. And uh, still four goals between these two sides. Both shooters on the spa approach is sitting at 100% in this quarter. 12 out of 12 for Fenter and 2 out of 2 for Taliat. Same as Uganda. Sholok, 10 out of 10. Yaru, yet to convert the goal. She's had one attempt. Finally drops side centre. Yeah, I think, uh, ladies, that uh, gives South a clear Africa. indicator to the opposition. Who's the person that needs to be shut down the shooting circle? And it's Sholok because Yari is not taking those attempts after her failed one. Whereas on the other side of the goalpost, there is it's not quite even out the responsibility, but Daliar doesn't shy away from it when the opportunity presents. So it gives a balance. You know, options are for the attackers as they move into the shooting circle of the spot Proteas. At the moment, the Proteas just very strong on that defensive setup, really keeping the line, keeping the Ugandan players up high, and then just forcing Cholak to the give them the lead. Center. Once she takes that lead, they can challenge. And another pick up there from Sonamadva. Opportunity for the Proteas to make this one count right before the half quarter break. I just want to take us back to that because it started with the ch challenge and the contest from Pumza Maweni. And uh, Van der Merwe being there for the pickup just tells you that you cannot defend alone. It's a team effort. You have to have a wing defense that's so switched on, that's able to collect and, you know, get those pickups. But unfortunately, Scott Protea is not able to make it count. Clock is ticking away. All the sheep cranes. Get into the shooting circle before the whistle goes, and unfortunately, 
They are unable to do so. As the whistle goes off and signaling that we've reached the first quarter, well, the first 15 minutes of play. And uh, there's the score at the moment. 16 for the Spa Proteas versus 11 of Uganda. A uh, great uh, start from the Spa Proteas. Very encouraging in the first uh, 15 minutes of play. And we can see the bench is looking rather calm and collected. They're in control. They've got this. And uh, the spectators rallying behind their home side. So really, the fans here at the Cape Town International Convention Centre have made a huge difference for the Spa Proteas, filling up the venue. It's just been wonderful. Well, uh, there's the coach of uh, Uganda, Stuart Cranes, just uh, asking the team to keep things uh, slowed down. But uh, we're going to take a bit of a breather, and when we do come back, we'll resume with the second quarter action. back again at the Cape Town International Convention Center where two African countries are battling it out. Spa Proteas taking the lead at the end of the first quarter. Only five goals are separating these two teams and uh, one would say Amanda you know the Spa Proteas have really had the upper hand from a holistic show up on all fronts in the first quarter. Proteas just really having the upper hand at the moment and just offensively they're putting Uganda under a lot of pressure really shutting the options off from Cholok and not giving them that circle edge so great defensive work and also just taking each turn over they get and converting that onto a goal yep and there's definitely been some Crucial and important steals from the spot purchase applying a unit defense. So it's going to be interesting to see what they continue to do as we're about to get into the second quarter of action. And almost immediately, the spot purchase is picking up from when they left off. 10 seconds to score their first goal in the second quarter. Tells you about the efficiency, the pace with which the um, Spark Proteas are approaching this match. And it's going to be important for the Spark Proteas to maintain this intensity for the entire duration of the game. That pressure paying off there from 
South Africa. Growing centre third. And saw me there. Almost ready to get on with it. Not sure why are they stopping them. She's on fire. Contact wing defence. And we've seen the change from Sormi and Grissel. Grissel now moving to that wing attack position. She can play, she and both from Sormi can play both those positions. It is expected, isn't it? We've seen a normal plan, you know, uh, making those uh, positional switches quite often. Yeah, I think at the moment, Grissel just giving them a good option on the circle edge and just realizing that she'll get them onto that second phase of play straight away from that center pass. Oh, that's the third consecutive goal for the Spark Proteas. So this is a solid start for them in this quarter. And again, we're seeing the turnovers coming through from the defensive trio in Fanamerve, Pretoria, Maweni. That's what we're talking about. The pressure's got to start earlier. So by the time it hits that uh, defensive third of the spot Proteas, it uh, really puts the shoe crane under the whip. So they're certainly up the tempo in this second quarter, the spot Pro Proteas. Seamless attack, this precision, this ball speed, and this control when necessary. Finding contact, goal attack. Uh, look at that there from Nanfaku, she's feeling defense. frustrated at the moment, she doesn't have the answers against Fenter. So that is the fifth consecutive goal for the Spa Proteas, not a response from Uganda, they are yet to score in this quarter. But a much better centre pass there from Uganda. We did see them in that first quarter just getting caught. Both attacking players just being over the line and not getting another connection onto the circle edge. Having to go to Cholak a lot of times. So I think just on the centre passes especially, much better effort from Uganda. How brilliant was that take and turn from Pumzama when he's doing well to get around the body of Cholak. Just exactly where she left off yesterday, Maweni, but the patience from the Spa, spa Proteas are going to need to come into play here once that turnover ball is in their hands. And also what's uh, been quite interesting in this match so far, it's just how much work Mary Sherlock has to do to almost collect the ball herself, because you can see that the attackers are not able to break through the defensive web of the Spark Proteas. And Coach Fred, not a happy looking coach at the moment. You know him as a straightforward coach, he just gets to the point. But it looks like we might see some changes coming from Uganda. Your thoughts on possible changes, Zanelli? Contact, yeah, well, Amanda, this is their go-to starting combination, you know, and at the moment, it's just not doing the job for Uganda, so I'm really not quite sure what he's going to bring on court here, because for me, what has been the difference is just the pressure defensively from the start, the spa approaches, because it's starting right from the top. They're forcing Uganda to play a lot of balls in the mid-court. They cannot penetrate the goal, the goal third. So it's going to be very interesting to see what he does to try and assist his team to be able to be a threat to the star, star approaches at this point. Yeah, and I, and I do expect maybe a change to bring in Bagala and just to help assist with the passes and the feeds going into that circle. Yeah. And, we'll, and I also, also feel that Iaru needs to start coming into play now. I mean, we already... Deep in the second quarter, she hasn't even attempted to take a shot. All the pressure is on Sherlock in that shooting circle, sitting at 39 of 13. But yeah, she needs to share that responsibility and, and start, you know, shouldering some of that pressure in the shooting circle. Yeah. Well, I suppose that would explain why we've got uh, Mohammed Hanisha 
also standing courtside. She is an option for Coach Fred Mugera as a shooter. But what's going to be interesting is, is she going to take that goal attack position or shooter or goalkeep even? Because she's also played at the back. So, I mean, those are all the considerations for this head coach. Yeah, and we see Nasanga coming in then on the goal attack. I assume that Iaru will take the wing attack position. We've seen him make these changes in previous matches. Fred Muguera. Hanisha Mohamed, quite a young player, very versatile. We've seen a lot of the goal shooter, but she takes the goalkeeper bit. Try and be a disturbance there on Ina Marie Fenter. Who's currently sitting on 17 out of 17, 100% for Fenter. And Michelle Taliat, 6 out of 6, 100% as well. Coach Norman Plummer must be extremely happy with the current performance of her shooters. Baseline drive from Inamiri Fenter. Plants herself right under the goalpost. And that takes the Spa approaches to a 12 goal lead. And this has been the thing from the Spa approaches. They're forcing that second phase ball to stay in the midcourt. Struggles from Uganda to get into the goal third. A lot of ball being played back into this midcourt. This is excellent defense. The pressure is up. Eventually, it will pay off. Oh, there he does. He's not really contesting every single time. Pollock drives out of that shooting circle. I've got to tell you, I have been extremely impressed by Pumza Maweni. She is fearless and she knows the task at hand. And more importantly, you know, she's starting to show her experience and years of wealth and knowledge coming through at critical moments for the Spark Pro Tears. Over a third throw in Uganda. Uganda. <laughs> Whole time. Goal line throw in. Goal line. And Mohammed will have her first throw in for the day. But it's contact centre. Uganda just getting caught being really high up on contact the attack. Goal shooter. Really overloading the court to the one side. Oh, things are heated there in the Ugandan circle as again the spot protests deny them access to that shooting circle. But look at that from Mohammed turning the ball back again for the shoot crane. So it is the battle of the two defensive circles. Oh, there's a beautiful setup there as Nasanga finally connects with Mary Sholok. This is their third goal in a space of nine minutes. It's not what the coach uh, Fred Maguero would have wanted. Uganda. But you've got to give credit to the defensive efforts of Contact the Spark Pro to your side. This defensive pressure is forcing Uganda to really play out of character. Mary Cholock is extremely lethal when she's in the shooting circle, but she's had to do a lot of ball collecting out of the circle to assist on the attack. And that's because of the defensive work from the Spa approaches, but they turn ball in their favor then to Uganda. They just need to be able to finish it off. And it's been Christine Nakitu who took that intercept for Uganda. Interesting, she's sitting in that top 13 of intercepts during this tournament. She's been quite lethal on that uh, Ugandan defense. On time. Just grab a 
mop for the floor. Wing defence, just watch the timing on that. Just grab a mop, please. A mop, so, please umpire's time, just um, where the place to go. make sure that uh, the court is safe for play, play to resume. Following uh, that uh, mid-air collision, where Christel found herself on the floor, but it is a penalty that's called the blind against blind the wing defender. Wing attack, you're bleeding. Can I have a look at the ball, please? Blood, sweat, tears. All of that part of the game at the moment. But we will see Tawane taking court. Well, they get Kritzel sorted out. And you know what a crowd favourite Tawane is immediately. The crowd just quite excited to see her come on court on that wing attack position. She did have a bit of a knock yesterday against New Zealand. There were some concerns that it might be a concussion, but she's got a test and they came back negative. So good to see Tawane on the wing attack position then for the Scar Proteus. Bunnage, contact, goal attack. So 12 goals. Lead for the Spark Proteus, just four and a half minutes in it. Oh, great job. The quick hands from Uganda. But uh, look on coach Freda Mugiba's face says otherwise. He's not pleased at all. It's intentional contact, it's a caution. Goal defence, goal defence, next step will be a warning. Beside the goal defence. Oh, it's body on body in that shooting circle of the stop. Spar Proteus. The contest escalates. Nachito is going to be careful. She's been cited by the umpire. They need to clean up. Nalwanja also got a bit of a talking to. Uganda. And some smiles there from Fainter. Much better passage of play there by Uganda. <laughs> Using the back players on that centre pass, allowing the mid-court players to drive through. And they do find Nisanga who will have her first attempt. But look at that defensive work from Maweni. Oh, Pumza Maweni, so brilliant there. Nisanga did take a bit of a step forward. Pumza not moving, staying right there. Turning that ball to Spa Proteus' favour and quickly they transition on the attack. And Ina Maria Fenter not putting a foot wrong in this game so far. 22 out of 22, 100%. Exceptional performance from the shooting circle of the Spa Proteus. I mean, you've got to celebrate that, Amanda, because when we saw Fenter yesterday against uh, the Silver Fist, she seemed a bit unsettled, you know, missing the confidence. And she's come out today. She's taking every single shot. She's confident. And, uh, you know, she's the queen of the circle, owning it in a, such a short space of time. So that quick turnaround is important because it is certainly translating into Fender's performance this afternoon. Sammy, I'm looking at this now, and I know everyone has been asking how do we get into that semi-final position. We know the Spa Proteas need to win this by 63 goals. And at the moment, they are keeping Uganda quite low. And uh, if they can keep on doing this, they're putting them under a lot of pressure. More than what we expected them to do. So it's just great work from the Proteas. Yeah, it is a good job by the Spa Proteas so far. He's trying to do the math now, you know, trying to see what the goal difference would have to be for each quarter for them to get that spot. But uh, we're a resilient nation. We know that uh, nothing is impossible until that uh, final whistle goes. It's just good to see the determination and the fight from the Spa Proteas to really keep that scoreboard board ticking. Uganda. They are on a mission here. It does look like a mammoth task, but impossible is nothing. So that's a good collection from Nasanga. At the moment, just 
things going in favour of the Proteas. We did see Uganda up against the Silver Ferns earlier this week. Only managing to, to beat New Zealand, beat Uganda by only 10 goals. So at the moment, just Proteas playing their socks off. Oh, Pumza Moen is all over. Mary Sholak not giving her any room to breathe whatsoever. <laughs> so uh, just uh, 20 seconds remaining to the halfway mark. Just enough time for the spot purchase to sink in one more goal. Oh, Daliart, she has been outstanding. And the spot protests are up by 14 goals. As we reach the halfway mark, signaling the end of the second quarter. You can see high fives all around in the camp of the spot protests. It was a job well done. They took the lead by five goals in the first quarter and a nine in the second quarter. And there's a collective that makes them then up by 14. So for the she cranes, unfortunately, things are not going according to plan. And I'm sure that uh, Coach Mugera will be looking at uh, re-strategizing going into that uh, second half. Lillian, a very tough first half for you guys. You've had to play against two incredible centers from South Africa. How do you guys bounce back in the second half? Well, we w when we went out, we talked of our defense. Like they, sh they should improve because most of the goals, most of the balls are just entering, just passing through. So when we went back, we told them to rectify, like let them mark man to man. Then on the attacking side, we tried to adjust where by we are no longer using long balls as we used, as we started. Yeah, that's how we've improved. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Is it to talk about a good start? Now that's how you do it. You guys are quite good in the first half. How do you stay consistent? Thank you so much, first of all. And at this point, we're just focusing on the basics. Just focus on our goal for the game, and that's to minimize the errors as usual. Um, so yeah, we're just focusing on that for now. And is it at the back of your minds that you got to get that 60 goals, or you guys are just playing ball to ball? definitely there so we are aiming for that but at this point we're just focusing on what to do and the game plan but it's definitely something we're working for i mean it's always a possibility all the best thank you so much So that if I want to continue, do you think she wants to continue? <laughs> yeah, well, right. That I agree with. Later on, Tonga.
You're on the right place to be following the campaign of the Spa Pro Tears in the 2023 Afro World Cup. As you can see on your screen, South Africa versus Uganda, where South Africa is convincingly pulling ahead. It is beautiful, 33-19. And we feel proud right now. Why? Because this was a team that was meant to be super challenging and is a little bit here and there. But this is what we're looking at at halftime in terms of what exactly is happening. And you're on SABC2, where you belong. It is round about that time, ladies, where we need to look at what exactly we've been doing right as the Spa Pro Tears, especially seeing the result that we see. I want to come to you first, Alsha, because you're the person who's got the numbers. You understand the pools and everything because <laughs> it can be a very, very challenging time to try and understand how it works in the Netball World Cup. But 33-19, after we drew to New Zealand yesterday, we need, what, like 63 goals against uh, Uganda, or rather a gap between them of 63, to go through to the next round that we want to be in. Yeah, we need to beat them by 64 or more goals Ooh. to go to uh, G2. Now, once you G2, you, you advance to the semi-finals. Mm. If we don't beat them by that, we will then... We, well, first we need a win against Uganda, then the goal average come into play. Yeah. Now, as it seems, we're going to get the win. Now we need to get the goals. If we're not getting that goals, but we get the win, we, yes. we drop to G3. Oh. No pressure, then G3 right? <laughs> will play A4, yeah. which will be determined in the game after this one, which yes. is between Malawi and Tonga. Indeed. If we lose, and now we're not going to, but if we lose, if we say we're covering all the what-ifs, yes. then it means we will play then the winner of, so then we G4, G4 cross pool for F3, yeah. and that will determine who plays out for the 5 and 6 position on Sunday. Oh goodness, well just looking at what has gone down, particularly talking numbers, let's talk players. China, mm -hmm. speak to us about this really great play that we're seeing mm -hmm. from the Spa Proteus. Well at the moment what we're seeing on our screens is the team Uganda. Yes. This is not the netball I know them to be playing. Not at all. I mean, they were guns blazing when they were playing against Australia. Mm. But I must give credit to our defence line. Kumza, Tarla, Shadeen at the back, they are everywhere. Yes. They're causing confusion, allowing the, or forcing um, Uganda to come out of that circle. Everyone's fetching the ball, doesn't show too much structure, and the balls are everywhere right now. So mm -hmm. it really does look like things are very hectic in that circle and beyond. But we are going to be getting into more of this right here on SABC2. Do not go anywhere. It's Uganda versus South Africa. in that shooting circle. I mean, if you're having an Ina Marie Fenter sitting at 92% and Natalia who was shooting at 100%, uh, Coach Norman Plummer just choosing to bring in Ina Marie, Marie Elmarie van der Berg, bring in that height and versatility then in the shooting circle of the Spa Proteus. Uganda. I think I'm quite happy with this change just to see what van der Berg can do in that goal attack position. And, Joining me is the Spa Approaches coach, attack. Coach Norma Plummer. Yes, coach, what have you made gap, of your team's performance in that first half? Yes, it's um, a little bit in and out, but uh, we're also trying to protect the body at the moment. 
and any areas of improvement come the second half you'd like to see? Well, yes, no, we've just changed up the line the lineup because we've got quite a couple of more games to go and we're trying to run fresh legs and also just look at some combinations on how they'll work. Coach, your team has been so strong defensively. The pressure they've been putting up, is that always the game plan? That's uh, probably the way I like to coach. <laughs> oh, Coach, I wish you the very best for the rest of the game. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, listen, she's a straight talker, doesn't mince the words. And as a coach, she's always had the clarity of purpose that is translated to the team because we can also see the defensive you know, brilliance that's coming through from this side. But what's interesting for me is that it is the shoot cranes that, that scored the first three consecutive goals in this quarter. It's taken the spot protest two minutes to settle down, given that change in the introduction of Van der Berg. But we know how she is. The minute she's in it, she becomes unstoppable. Construction. And Cholak there with South a lovely set, presenting herself to the ball. Just South Africa not getting that option in front, but it is Chawane that gives them that drive. And then the lovely top to the circle coming from Sony. This is what the spa approaches have been doing so well in this game. They're forcing those back center passes. So much pressure on first phase. Oh! Contact center. Oh, for a moment I thought that would be a replay. Contact, goal defense taken. On Naluanja, but they get a chance then. They make it count to do the she cranes. Yep, at the moment. Just seems like Uganda have got things under control on that attack. They are leading this quarter. Five goals to two. They seem to have find the connections going into Cholok. Yeah, and defensively, they seem to be setting themselves up against uh, Fenter and Van der Berg. I think the spa approaches need to revert back what was, to what was working defensively in that first half. They were putting hands over and they were really tracing every player. They didn't allow them, you know, to penetrate that goal third. A little bit too easy now for Uganda on this third quarter. And they weren't highly reliant on Pretorius and Maweni to turn ball. The ball was turning in the midcourt. And Saga just indicated to Maweni to please give her the ball so she can get on with it. Contact, we attack. Here we can see the drives coming from Atola on that center position, pulling through. Listen, this is really a strong start South from Africa. the sheep cranes. Just if we look at this quarter, only the start of the third quarter, they've managed to score seven goals compared to two of the spa proteas this change up here having Thunderbird come on goal attack something that the attacking lineup of the spa proteas still need to adapt to when they had talia talia was a ball fetcher you know playmaker Thunderbird still wants to go and plant herself in the shooting circle she's going to do the work up front and be the distributor of that ball into the shooting circle at the moment She's asking Fenter to be the one to pull out of the circle because she wants to go and anchor. Barney, contact, win attack. Yeah, well, I hope uh, no, my plan will make uh, the necessary call. Because it's really out of character. Besides seen so many defense. balls being turned in the shooting circle of the spot protest. We're actually seeing Norma calling Nicole Dalyard. So, not sure if that means... Well, yeah, she is uh, standing Barney, contact, goal, by. Attack. Looks like she will... Get back on court, but there's a little bit of confusion there. Uganda. You can see they're trying to relay a message across from the bench. The scores 8-2 in the quarter in favor of Uganda. Construction. You can see the lovely work from Saga. Just giving
giving them the option on the outside of the circle. Yeah, well, Talyat will make her way then back on the goal attack. You hear she's a crowd favorite here. Yeah. Yes, then that's the right move. Moving Vandenberg to goal shooter where she's comfortable. That's her position. That's where she's strong. But I also need to say that the spa protesters have taken off their foot off the pedal defensively. They're allowing those first phase balls now off the center pass to go to the front players. Iyaru collecting bulk of those center passes. Lovely to see Nsaga there at the top of the circle. Just finding both her mid-court players out wide. Just linking the ball Contact to the top. And they do find Cholok. Come around. Where you are. Oh, this is unbelievable stuff. The Spot Pro Tiers have given away the lead that they enjoyed at halftime. It was a 14-goal difference. At the moment, they're only up by six. It's the she cranes a center pass. And we know this, ladies, once that uh, margin you know, gets reduced to single digits, it becomes a lot more attainable, a lot more you know, achievable for the she cranes because we can see a renewed sense of energy on the attacking side of Uganda. Let so me talk about this performance of the Spa Projects in this third quarter. We saw the script when they played against Jamaica. They scored, twi they scored three goals in 15 minutes in that third quarter. It is the championship quarter at the moment. Trailing by eight goals in this quarter, sitting only on two. And Uganda make that 11. So there's something that needs to be looked at here when it comes to the third quarter scores for the Spa Proteas. They cannot go and rest on their laurels now just because they are leading. Really got to bring it back together. They really have to bring it back together looking at the last 10 goals. You can see seven consecutive goals are from the Sheep Cranes. But out of those, are 10 and 9 going in favor of the Sheep Cranes. So it tells you that there's been a swing in momentum, Don't definitely in favor of Uganda. Yeah, and I think for me, the biggest change right now coming from Uganda is just the work from their mid-court players. You can see, they, again, Irene Ayara just fighting herself on that circle edge. Something that the Bratia stopped them from having in that first half. So much better attack coming from Uganda in the start of this third quarter. Coach is still looking unimpressed, courtside. But I'll tell you this, whatever he said to the sheep crane at the halfway mark has given them a renewed sense of energy and purpose. And that gets an applause then from Ina Marie Fenter. She stands up and applauds that passage of play from her teammates. Yeah, and just to talk to the shooting circle that have changed, I think just maybe both Fenter and Vandenberg just presenting the same option to the ball a lot of times, just being in the same spaces, whereas if Talia, she just, just gives them a different option. Um, and maybe the change coming in that shooting circle also being a good change for South Africa. Oh, that's the trademark of you get the Mawani! Exceptional steal from Pumza Maweni. Strong take of that ball. Just need to make this one count now, the Spa Proteas. Oh, that was exceptional from Pumza Maweni. Maweni doing good there, just coming around, controlling that ball. Tell you that extra option. So there's that replay of that sensational take from Maweni. So seven goals are separating the two teams. Oh, 
Vandenberg doing well there to contest for that rebound. So this is much better from the Spark Proteas, but they do still well, need to continue chipping away at the scoreboard. Anything's possible, that's what we've learned today. Given some major upsets, surprise victories, and all sorts of good things. And that's been characteristic of what you can anticipate here at the Netball World Cup. Keeper beside. Just a great tag there that we did see from Cholak. Confidence from her as a player at the moment. She's taking balls all over. Oh, coming in nice and strong there from Lalonja and she wins it in the favour of the She Cranes. Oh, the crowd is protesting, but that was brilliant from Lalonja. Yeah, she has been rock solid on the green defence position and also providing an additional source of support in bringing that ball down court. What's really also been standing out for me in this third quarter from Uganda is that they're letting that ball go. And the reason why they're doing that is because the star approaches are not putting up the pressure like they did in that first half. The first half it was hands over, tracing every play and nowhere to go defense. for Uganda. At the moment it's too open. Pretty sure. Just having that confidence to let Uganda. that ball go. Hold time. Let's get the ball straight back. Uganda centre. Lovely drive there from Irene. Ayara onto center. that ball. Again, the saga having to do a lot of work for Uganda. I thought that was a clever option as well from Liliana Chola, South seeing South that um, Nasanga wasn't the option. And Karla had switched over to Cholok. So it was a safer option for the shoe cranes. So we're back to a six goal game. Crystal also standing courtside. Could signal that uh, she may take to court very shortly. Yeah, it's so important for the Proteas to shut down the options. Once Cholak has got the ball. And look at that clever play from the Saga. Keeping it low. To, to the African style. And uh, just a reminder then, of course, that uh, these two teams have met twice in uh, previous World Cups with the Spark Proteas having won both encounters. But uh, this World Cup has really been characterized by surprises, so anything's possible, only five goals in it. But uh, they did meet at the 2022 Commonwealth Games, where the Shu Cranes took the victory in that instance. But I know that uh, the Spark Proteas will not fall for the same tricks again. But they've got to play their socks off to defend this margin. Much better defense from the Proteas, pushing Uganda up. But Uganda showing great patience with the ball. The Saga again, the little roll pass. Well, I'm not sure if it's a roll, it's a bit of a bounce. And a lovely finish there from the Saga. And that's been the difference as well for Uganda in this third quarter. Since Nasaga has come in on the goal attack position. Oh my goodness, from nowhere! Nachito turning that ball, both hands, brilliant intercept. As I was saying, that goal shooting circle now, there's a bit of shared responsibility from Uganda. Oh my goodness, Pumza Mareni says, if you can, so can I. Oh, that was exceptional vision from Pumza Maweni. And unfortunately, time runs out for the Spark Proteas after such a brilliant job being done by Pumza Maweni. They're not able to make it count. So as we wrap up the third quarter, it is a, a five-goal game. And there's the score breakdown. Great start in the first two quarters for the Spark Proteas. But Uganda taking the lead by nine goals in the third quarter.
to erode that margin to only a five-goal game to the Spa Proteas at the end of the third quarter. We certainly have a game on our hands as we look forward to the fourth and final quarter. Great job in that first half of the match, but uh, what a superb comeback from the Sheep Cranes who eroded what was once a 14 goal lead by the Spark Proteas, and at the moment only five separate the two. Great quarter there from Uganda. They did win that last quarter 17 to 8. Really took the Proteas to a different level. And now the changes from the Proteas as well, seeing Stradum moving to that wing defence position. Smith on the goal defence. And Christel back on for the Proteas on that wing attack position. Five goals the difference. Will rank number five, South Africa, up against will rank number eight. So we get the fourth quarter underway. Uganda takes the center pass. And already seeing changes that have been introduced by the Spa Proteas. Those changes coming through defensively. We spoke about Grissel, who was going to step in as well, but straight him in on that uh, wing defense. Smith in on goal defense. Your thoughts, Amanda? Yeah, I think just at the moment, Proteas just trying to shut down the options. Going to that circle edge, finding the connection to Cholok. We did see much better attacking play from the Uganda side in that third quarter. So just some fresh legs. Just 
been good for the Uganda today. Sitting on that 92%, doing a lot of shooting. We're so used to seeing Cholok doing the majority of the work. So the variety in that circle just being great. Oh my and goodness. there she is. Again, Nakitu. Christine, lovely defensive work from that girl. Takes her up to a fourth intercept for today. We've seen her at the top of intercepts in this tournament. And the good tempo control down court then from Uganda to find Sherlock under the post. And it will go one way. That's what she's been doing so well, consistently so, sitting 100% shooting average for Mary Sherlock. Amanda, you speak about you speak about the contribution of Nasanga in that girl attack position. She's really changed it up there for Uganda. There were struggles there in the first half when Yaru was on girl attack, but Nasanga just being the solution in sharing that responsibility with Mary Shalom. Oh my goodness, fall short. They couldn't find Van der Berg. And here comes Uganda. What a great steal there from Muhammad. In circle, defenders really taking a step up at the moment. Again, you get showing great control with that ball. Patience under pressure. Ladies, we are definitely in the pressure cooker in this encounter. Because um, if the shoot cranes make it count, they get the next center pass. They could equalize and then we'll have a game on our hands. Simi, I hear the words of Ruth Meme during that build-up where she said the Ugandan she cranes are coming here, they are on a mission, they know exactly what they need to do in this game. They certainly were never going to go away. They do have a lot to prove here. We do know the last time these two teams met, the she cranes did win against the Spa approaches in the Commonwealth Games. And Zanele, just to echo your sentiments, I'm sure they want to send a message that that wasn't a fluke, it wasn't a one-hit wonder, but uh, they are a team to be reckoned with as they take the next center pass, which could effectively equalize things. And now, do they have the patience? Oh, great defensive work there by Friesel. Just not being able to pull that in. Oh, the crowd not happy with that. Christine just uh, getting herself into a bit of a, an entanglement with Chrysal. And again, Nasanga just presenting herself to that ball, taking the shot. She makes it count. 14 from 15 from that lady today. And then we see the coach up on his feet and the rest of the bench of Uganda. What an unbelievable comeback from the she Cranes. They just kept their processes. They stuck to basics. Shooting circle combination started working. Defensively, they started bringing, turning that ball in their favor. And they were so brilliant when it came to conversion of turnover ball. Oh, look at Irene Iaru on that wing attack position. Collecting the ball, patiently looking for support. There's Nasanga in the mix. She has been a complete game changer for the Sheep Cranes. Oh, it's quite physical here on court. Iaru just finding herself on the ground but gets up. It's a physical contest here. There's a lot to play for. There's a lot at stake for both these teams. It's bragging rights. It's playing for pride. It's about putting your body on the line. Just at the moment, Uganda not giving way. They're not going to let the Proteus off the hook this afternoon. 
Opposing contact, wing defense. Such a great contest for both these it's African nations. Defense. Two of the representing countries at the World Cup. Malawi and Zimbabwe joining them. Wing defense. Amanda, listen, it is a great contest. Wing defense out of play. The score equalized, showing exactly what we're being treated to here. But I'll tell you this. Uganda. I know that we in Cape Town, the rest of South Africa, cannot take another draw. There needs to be a victory. That's what the spot approaches are out here to do. But Uganda will not at all, you know, give it away when they can see the victory. They can smell it. And uh, they're certainly getting the benefit, at least in the second half of this match. And that's motivation enough for the Sheep Cranes to take it all the way. And with just over eight minutes to go, we will see who will be crowned the African Queen after this. So precision, being clinical is going to be crucial in the last eight minutes as we see Yaru again coming out for the center passes. Straight is going to have to be tighter, but there's the turnover. Oh, just getting a foot over that line, Charlock. Oh, you see how the bench of the spa approaches it up on their feet. This is the turnover they need. They just need to make sure that they take it through and it counts. Oh, funny the bird. Easy does it. And this was the concern we heard about, we had rather about uh, Charlock doing a little bit too much in that goal shooting third. Out of desperate attempts to assist on the attacking side of things, and there's another blast ball picked out there by Nasanga. Great work by the Ugandan cap wing, captain Arena Yora, just on that line for Uganda. And then it's that control once they get onto the circle's edge. It's the patience. It's the tempo control and it's the conversion from Nasanga who's come on court in the second half of this game and turned up the heat in that shooting circle of Uganda. So uh, there's uh, an opportunity for Uganda to equalize once more. Easy does it. Mary Sherlock, the queen of the Ugandan shooting circle. Oh, it was well set up there. Christine read that. Uganda. But the timing from the Spark Pro Tears was superb. Great play there by the Pro Tears going into that circle and the speed of the ball being key for them, just releasing the ball at the right time. And this is what Uganda is doing so well on the attack. They're just positioning themselves in front of the defenders. They're driving strong to get the easy ball. They're not playing to the strength of the Spa Pro Tier defenders. Nothing over, everything coming straight and strong. Oh, Mohamed is finding herself over committing in two instances. And that uh, then forces uh, Christina Kito to fall back on Van der Berg, and it hasn't worked, so she needs to guard against that. Again, great special awareness coming from the Sangha. It's the way she's moving that circle at the moment for Uganda. The sweep work, just driving herself, presenting herself to that ball, and then, of course, finishing it with the shot and this is the mistake that the spot approaches are doing at the moment in that defensive circle they're both focusing Contact on Mary Sholok, Pumza Moenu and uh, Nicholas Smith and completely that forgetting about the lethal force that is Nasanga yeah at the moment they just really got to play Uganda. a tight game against Nasanga just not give her room silent assassin that. is Nasanga and they'll play the reset ball, they'll recycle that ball, Uganda, until it opens up in the shooting circle. Oh, oh my goodness, the ball there. Caught! Oh my goodness.
goodness. Unbelievable Zanele. Oh my goodness, and she looked at the umpire, Achola, like caught red-handed with her hands in the cookie jar. Turnover ball then for the spa approaches. Oh my goodness! What an intercept by Nakito! Exceptional take from nowhere. She came in and turned that ball two hands. Intercept queen, I would say. It's been good today. Brilliant defensive work. Yeah, so there was a bit of confusion there, but the umpire said, mentioned that uh, Achola went offside. So it's the second time that Achola has passed them. She needs to calm down. There's a one goal difference at the moment. So every single decision is crucial at this point. Because the defenders are really turning ball, creating opportunities for their team. But it's the unforced errors that are putting uh, Uganda where they find themselves trailing by one. But again, Uganda are not giving way to the Proteas at the moment. Proteas having to play back short. And then they do find Funenberg. Very rare Messi that we're seeing from the youngster. Opportunity for Uganda now to equalize. Oh, that's what pressure does though. Very uncharacteristic for Funenberg to miss that shot right under the shooting post. But here's an opportunity then for Uganda. And for and a the moment, pressure from the Spa Proteas. For a moment there we did lose Simi. She's back in the box. Yeah, I know. Listen, cannot take the pressure at the moment, the intensity. It's filtering from the venue to the commentary box because this is unbelievable. Some of the best netball being displayed by two African giants. Oh, Smith, excellent. Three foot defense. Oh, right on the money, Nicholas Smith. Turns that ball for the spa approaches. They need to take it down with patience, though. Contact. Hold time. Win defense. You're persistently infringing. It's a caution. Next time is a warning. Oh, no, that's quite interesting because uh, warning being issued uh, to Nalanjwa. Crystal also has a uh, caution, I beg your pardon. Crystal also has her own caution. So the two players are really backing it out there. But on the positive side, Spa Proteas up by two goals. It's their own centre pass. And they've got to make it count. for the sheaf cranes to reduce that margin it's not over yet oh look at that too clever playing herself in and nasanga does it again she has been superb boasting a 91 percent success rate proteas will slow it down one minute on the clock they'll keep the ball in hand They'll run down the clock. They're up by two. They just need to keep possession. Contact, goal defender. Great defensive effort there by Uganda. Beside the goal defense. And now back. they will take their time. Step back. Yeah, I think that's pretty much done for the spa approaches. Just need to try and stop this ball from going through to the shooting circle. But even if it does, will be South Africa's centre pass and they can just play it down, run down the clock as Amanda Maynard has alluded to. You can see time being called by the umpire because every second now is precious. And uh, potentially time for one more! One more goal! The Spa Proteas lose possession she cranes back on the attack, but they don't have enough time. Look at that beautiful long range, but unfortunately, Shola called up for stepping error. Goal denied, and that pretty much cements it. For the small protest, Shola is having a disagreement with the umpire at the moment. But be it as it may, the decision.
decision was made and the result goes in favour of the Spark Proteus. Oh my goodness, what a match. Spark Proteus had us on the edge of our seats, put them under tremendous pressure. The coach is not impressed at all. But uh, really, it was an incredible encounter. And you can see both teams are taking the center of the court. Just as a celebration of how netball has grown across the continent. But uh, that is the result at the end of the day. Spot Proteus taking the victory 52-50 at the end of the match. You can see some sad faces from the sheep cranes, but they've got to be proud of themselves. They put up a good fight after trailing by 14 at the halfway mark, and coming back, and they're really cracking the whip for the score approaches. Brilliant words of support from our, the skipper of the Spark Proteus, Bongim Somi. She knows what this means for the development of netball in the continent. So really, it has been a wonderful afternoon of uh, some of the best netball we've seen in a long time. And a big congratulations once more to Norma Plummer, to Misani Chawuke, Nicole Kusak, the coaches behind the Spa Proteus. Captain Bongi, a great win for your side. Not the best of second halves, but what do you have to say to everybody who's been watching and supporting you? Oh, I first have to say, uh, South Africans have been really beautiful since day one. They've been backing us. Probably not how we wanted to finish off uh, today. Uh, but I think I have to be um, very proud of the goals for the first half. Second half, really not pretty. There's a few times that we got caught, uh, I guess, with the short passes and we had a plan, so probably didn't really execute it as we wanted to. We'll take the win. We just had a loss against Jamaica, so maybe that's something that we can be proud of this World Cup. But we really wanted to play a really good netball today, and I think we let ourselves down a bit. So a potential fifth and sixth place uh, competition again against Uganda. What's your mindset going to be going into that one? Oh, I think uh, the best thing is we all know that Uganda is a great side. Um, firstly, a common game they did beat us, and it wasn't just a close score. It was actually, um, they, they played really well. So today for us, this was really just to claim our pride back and grab a win. We thought it was probably after that first half, we thought it was going to be bigger than what it was. But we take this win and knowing that they're going to come hard again, which was going to be another test for us. So we have to look forward to actually um, finishing off with the win. You guys are having a good campaign. Congratulations. Thank you so much, sis. So next up uh, is a Ugandan captain. I mean, a tough one, Irene, for you. I mean, you guys felt a little bit short held at the end there. How are you guys feeling about this loss? Yeah, of course we didn't expect this because we wanted this way, but uh, it is a highlight for us. But so we can't lose hope. We still have more games to play. Uh, we always get to learn, like whenever we end up like this, we always get to learn so many things. But still, we cannot say that like, they are better than us now. We lose hope, no. We still have more chances of playing two more games whereby we think we shall make them. Well, you guys at the end didn't want to shake hands. What was going on there? Of course, like, so many people, like, around, they know how to play. That's why we're making changes all over, because once when we feel like there's some small mistake, so the coach has the right to change all the players who are on the bench and they can make a better uh, correction from the coach. I thought you guys did very well. You showed African pride. It was a great uh, African derby. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And uh, for the lady of the moment, she's won herself a player of the game. And uh, that's it, uh, Shadia. Congratulations. I mean, you came on and you made a difference for the side of the sheep cranes. How are you feeling? Thank you. I'm, I feel so grateful for this thing because I never expected this. South Africa is a good team. Is a good team. Being a player of the match or the big team is not easy. So it's a good achievement to me. So how do you guys bounce back from this loss for your next game? Uh, bouncing back to the next to the next game will be easy because we knew South Africa was not a bad team. So we are just trying to win South Africa, but next time we shall pick up the and we'll fight for that.
You guys showed us a great match. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Your brutal dragons. Are you talking on the error. Or maybe if we didn't no. do a replay. Hello. If maybe. Like no. We choose, we choose one person. Oh, uh, so you actually have to say it on TV. Oh. Oh, I'm like, you're awesome. On TV we say, we did so many errors. Also, the angle's not real. I'm very proud of it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're going to keep it here. Yes, today. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, South Africa, we can be proud yet again. We said that this is the place that you are 100% following the Spa Proteus in their campaign in the 2023 Nepal World Cup. And we are so glad that we get to do it together. Right about now, we need to look at the standings because we know that South Africa was playing against Uganda, which was sitting at number four, who's still at number four now, especially with South Africa clinching that win. Alsha, what do you make of this? Yeah, sadly, we're now dropping out of the top two on goal average. Yes. So we are now fall, falling into the group that will play for position five to eight. So tomorrow the playoffs will start to determine who on Sunday will then play either five and six or seven and eight. Oh, and it's going to be very interesting because every god, everybody's got something to play for, rather. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yes. it's a ranking that's at stake. Well, not a final ranking, but a World Cup ranking, mm. and that obviously the points that you take away from here will count for your world ranking. 100%. So lots to play for. And we needed 65 goals to win. Why couldn't we get them? Do you know what I mean? Just 65. Just 65. Come on. <laughs> Every day is especially for someone like you, Lelise. <laughs> We're joined by none other than Spa Protea's goal shooter is Lelise Potchita, forgive me. Lelise, you're somebody who unfortunately had to fall away from the squad that's representing us at the 2023 Nepal World Cup. How are you feeling about that, especially watching the games now? I mean, you know what, it's still a bit of, bit of pill to swallow. Mm. Um, it's never nice to sit on the bench, never mind the secondary bench. But you know what, I try to... Just turn that around a bit. God has a plan with everything. Yeah. And you know what? My team is bringing it out there. I mean, look at last night, look at today. Um, I'm just really proud of them. I'm proud to be in the camp with them yeah. and just to share whatever I have up here in my brain with them. Um, yeah, so it's gutting missing a Nepal World Cup on home soil. But you know what? Um, Life goes on, it does. and I'm just there to support. It does, and, and we support you because we're so proud of you. Thank you. You played like an absolute superstar when you were in the World Cup, and that's why I say that we are 100% proud of you. But I also want to ask you, because of course, here's somebody who was just there with the ladies. We heard Bongi say there at the end of the match that they didn't play the netball they wanted to play. What do you think that means exactly? Where did we fall short today? Um, I think after halftime, which is something we always used to work on, is that third quarter. Mm. We do call it the championship quarter. Yes. Um, and we might have mm. lacked a bit of energy when we came out of the changing room um, and maybe we didn't come together as a whole in the huddle. I don't know what was going on. I wasn't on court, but just by looking at them. Um, and then Uganda came out with a bang. Yeah. We didn't know how to counter at them and they just got, I think, five or six goals in a row against us. Yes. Um, then we ended up six goals ahead instead of 13 or whatever. My math isn't that good. Um, <laughs> it's okay. You only need to count goals. Don't worry. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, but I think, yeah, so it's something that we need to still work on is getting out of the change room, actually shifting our focus to this has to, this quarter we have to go another gear up and yeah. not stay on the same gear. Um, and just 
take it to them. Don't Definitely. become complacent. Yeah. Um, we still need to work every quarter as if it's the last quarter we're going to play. I love that. And you know what? And hopefully we can take that into the rest of the World Cup. Yes. China, I want to come to you because you and I were absolutely shocked when we saw what happened. 14 goals up at half time all of a sudden five minutes into quarter three mm -hmm. we find ourselves just six goals away from the team and for me that's why i'm like how did that happen and why it's going to be interesting to take a look at the stats now actually yeah i think that's why i'm wearing my glasses i couldn't believe what i was seeing <laughs> uh, but it was it when we look at the stats i mean the shooting was phenomenal yes. it doesn't matter which shooter we had on court they did such a stellar job so shout out to them but if we go to our penalties and our contacts Again, that's where it caught up with us. That's where we became rattled, as Lenny said, when we went into that second quarter or second half of the game. Yeah. We didn't come gun blazing, and it showed. We started. Um, we didn't do well adjusting around the circles, and just the communication between uh, the change when Garla came off with um, Nicola and Punza wasn't so um, spot on. Yeah. And it kind of cost us. Look at the position they get together, coach. Yeah, the time in position is actually interesting. It just shows that yes. when the players just get the ball in hand, they just can really move. And today I was pleased that I could stuck to these structures and that the structures really stayed in a really difficult situation. You know, you go, no, there's not a real a lot of structure that you can play to or defend. Yeah. It's almost, I mean, they come through the middle third as if they play to whoever is available. Yes. So we could manage to do that and we did it with that quite quickly. They, they actually played around with the ball and that's just quite draining. So mm. for me it was quite clear that the intent was that they always wanted to win the game but it was never about a score line. Yeah. For us obviously it was about the score line. 65 the to way be they played oh. the, the, <laughs> Yes, and the way they played the position and the time they had the ball, 54% mm. yeah. um, of the time they had the ball in hand. Um, and that just show, slowed us down a little bit yeah. and then it caught up with us. It did indeed and unfortunately you know that margin where we were just so far away and all of a sudden not far away at all. It was a very crazy one but it is the ladies who did indeed take the win in any case and we can be so proud and this is why we caught up with Izet Hrisel. Watch this. First of all thank you so much and I think we just lost a bit of focus there in the middle. There was changes and I don't think we adapted easily enough or quickly enough to it. But in the end, we pulled it together to reach our goal. Going into the matches tomorrow, what is the game plan? So at this point, it's just to fix and to minimize the errors that happened today and over the past few days. We need to get better and better every game and to try to get as perfect as possible to the perfect match. So yeah, focus on minimizing the errors. We definitely felt the energy of the crowd in here. Please share with us, how does it feel like on court? It's so awesome. I don't think anyone can understand. Like I've never experienced this in my whole life. It's the best tournament ever and it's so amazing to feel all the South Africans cheering for, for us. Every good thing, every bad thing, it's, it's incredible. It is none other than the 2023 Netball World Cup. And honestly, just chatting to our amazing heroes, it is always so beautiful to hear from them what it means for South Africa to come out for them and be that eighth player. Lenise, we were talking about this. I mean, even Fred, the coach of Uganda, he mentioned it before the match. And he said he's going to tell his players to put cotton wool in their ears just so they can't hear everybody. I want to ask you, when you guys hear us screaming defend, when you hear us singing those guijos, how does it feel and does it spur you guys on actually? It's nice to hear from the actual person. <laughs> An actual person. Yes. <laughs> you know, um, I think the crowd has been amazing. Mm. Um, usually when the people from overseas ask me what you expect when they come to South Africa, I just told them loudness. <laughs> that yes. is what you're going to expect. You're going to experience the African spirit. Mm. Not, not just South African, the African spirit. Yeah. We're going to be loud, we're going to dance, we're going to chant, we're going to sing, we're going to yell. We're going to do everything we can yes. except be quiet. Oh. Um, so when I was playing against Jamaica, I just got goosebumps and I'm actually getting goosebumps right now even oh. though I'm overheating in this tracksuit. Um, just at how amazing the support is yeah. for our country. Like we might not have a 10,000 people capacity venue but even though even if we just have 3,000 people in the venue yeah. you think that you're in a stadium 100%. that can take hundreds of thousands of people so the support that we get the chanting we get from them it really boosts us and I think that is something that ultimately brought us over the edge yesterday last yeah. night against New Zealand is that we just they, are, they just kept on yelling the thing the thing the thing and i mean they put oh again goosebumps <laughs> and again. then Pumza just got that intercept for us and yeah. i mean we drew so 
if we didn't have our supporters and our fans behind us this entire tournament we wouldn't have been where we are today we wouldn't have been heroes like we feel like yeah. heroes to them because you are heroes to us what do you mean you feel us. like you're heroes to us 100 no. percent and i love that you even mentioned pumza and the fact that they were screaming defend over and over again because today here on sabc2 i think pumza maweni is our player of the match coach you agree yeah i absolutely agree since yesterday you know I've, you, she found herself way more much more in front not coming from behind and i thought she's my um she's much more effective now she's yeah. looser the, the, the switching between her and Carla is better and you even see some edging, you know, she's trying to, to cover the one and then drop onto the, um, the, the next. So she's just playing, up, almost setting up the opportunity, but then do the priority, which is intercepting the balls. And I thought she's been great for us today. She's been a fire there. She was so yes. psyched up at one stage. I saw her, you know, shouting at the girls and just, uh, you know, tell them, let's, let's get going with this. Yes. And I'm also very pleased that her and Carla, it seems like their combination has settled quite nicely at the moment. 100%. Speak to me about the Carla Pumza combination because we even missed it a little bit in the second half of the match. I think they really found each other really well, the way that you say, Alsha. Chino, what do you say about it, especially the way that she just played today in terms of I Pumza? mean, it's one of those combinations that we all know. It's a legendary combination. They've mm. played for years together. They know each other. They're friends off court. So it just adds to the whole dynamic they have on, um, on court. So for me, Carla Pumza is one of our greatest um, combination as South African. Yes. But we're also seeing Nicola coming in. The, the, the guidance the seniors, both Carla and Pumza are giving her. I think it's a good handover in that um, regard. But the hedging, the, 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 the switching, the, the calling each other in the right times, I think they're doing phenomenal for us. Yeah, and they really are. And this is why we say we're so proud of you guys, Linnies, because mm -hmm. honestly, you've done such a great job. Speak to us about the world rankings, right? Yes. Where are we hoping now to end up as South Africa? Especially if we're trying to be a little bit realistic, looking at the matches that we might be possibly facing very soon, especially from your side as well. Where do we hope we end up? No, you know what? I still think we could have played for one to four. Mm. Um, we are on that level. I think we've shown South Africa, we've shown the world now that we are. But yeah. at the stage, um, like Coach Alsha said, that we're playing for, for five to eight. We're definitely taking that fifth spot. Come on. I'm not even going to like beat around the bush yeah. with that. Yes. I'm not allowing from that secondary bench <laughs> yes. for them to take another <laughs> spot and fifth. Yes. Even though if I, if I have to climb through those fences. And do it yourself. Do it myself with my off knee. I will, no, I'm kidding. Now I know they can, they can pull it through. Um, we've got the mindset, we've got the skill set, we've got the coaches, we've yeah. got the game plan. It's just, again, executing it well, mm. sticking to the game plan doing what we've been told, but also using common sense yes. on court. If something's not happening for us, that adaptability yeah. is going to be crucial, especially if we come up against maybe a team like Tonga, who we've, I don't think I've ever played against. No, I've never played against. And they've either. been very, very impressive Listen. in this World Cup. Yes, yeah. yes. I know your name's not Lisa, but just the same. <laughs> um, yes. No, but they, they're so impressive yeah. and the name's in there. But, yeah, so definitely looking for that fifth yeah. place at the World Cup. Um, and let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Well, I mean, I feel like Coach Lanise has spoken, all right? <laughs> and this is what needs to happen <laughs> as far as Proteas. Yes, we are watching you. But of course, we also need to hear from the team that we won against today. It is one of the Ugandan players. Watch this. Hanisha, it was a bit of a slow start there for the she race. Can you talk about that? Well, I think we struggled, most especially in our second quarter, to be honest. Um, we dropped a couple of balls uh, on the attacking side. Very difficult to watch, you know, a few things go wrong. But uh, part of the girls that we came back in the third quarter and executed extremely well. Yeah, that was a brilliant comeback there. The end, a little bit too late. So what going into the games tomorrow, what's the plan? I tell you something, we're the queen of comebacks. We come back strong. We are, we, you never expect anything from the she cranes. We come here and call to fight, not only for, for the team, for the country, but for the dress as well. So I'm proud of the girls and guess what? Any team we're playing tomorrow, we're coming tough. Yeah. But before we get to tomorrow, I heard it is your birthday. What is the birthday plans here in Cape Town tonight? Oh, nothing really, just cake and you know, chilling, nothing really. But I'm proud that you know, I got cake, I did receive cake and you know, a little bit of songs from the South African fans, so thank you. It's all kinds of celebrations from wins on the Spa Proteus side to birthdays on the Ugandan side. But we're just happy because it is all about the netball here at the CTICC. And this is why we're glad we get to do it together on SABC2. Sheena.
parting words, especially because tomorrow <laughs> we're going to be facing yet another team. Yes. What do you think we need to do as South Africa? What can we take from this match? And where were we really, really strong for you? For me, I think South Africa just needs to dig deep. Yeah. Uh, in a sense that uh, we can't let things slip away. We can't have an off day. We can't uh, decrease our, our gears. Yes. Um, we just need to keep pushing forward. Stick to the game plan. We all know what to do. Do your job really well. Mm. And I think um, we just need to keep the, the South African spirit going on. I love that. And <laughs> Alsha and Lenise, I want to ask you, if we do meet Tonga or Malawi, I know Malawi's also been looking very strong. What are you predicting in terms of our scores against them? Alsha, start us off. No, no, we'll beat Tonga. I've got no doubt in my mind. <laughs> I'm sure Malawi's going to beat them tonight. I think so as well. And then Uganda and Malawi can fight it out tomorrow and yeah. we'll take Tonga and then we'll meet probably... Uganda again on yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but for me, this Pretty whole much. week for the Proteas has been a week of hope. You know, Indeed. they've been doing so well. They've making everybody so proud, and we're going to finish strong. So I've, I've got no doubt in my mind that we're going to go for a five. I love that. And Liz, we're wrapping up very quickly. Any words to South Africa, especially from your guys' side? What do you say? Yeah, I think from our side, as the team, as the management, as the spa Proteas, yeah. just thank you. Thank you for having hope in us, thank you for supporting us, thank yeah. you for being there for us and having our backs, even if we lose by four, like Jamaica, or if we draw against the world champions, or if we just win by small margins against Uganda, like, the support is unreal. Yes. Like, there's never any negative comments yes. um, at all. So, just thank you. Amazing. We wrap it up like that. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining us. We love you. Bye-bye.